Hakadosh, Boker Or, Bekin Balacha, Day 37. We're going to be on Siman Nun, and we are on Halacha Tet. We're talking about now Ki Kolelohe Amim Elilim. So, first of all, yeah, we are going to bring down Elilim. Yeah, we're going to bring down the different places, which this, the truth is, we shouldn't give this halacha over here. We should give it outside. And we should mention it a hundred times because people don't focus on it. So we'll just mention it. So, right? The, the concept of hudu includes the pasuk of this key. Now, when we're saying it, you have to make a pause between the words elilim and Hashem. Because if not, chas v'shalom ki'ilu, you're saying that Hashem is powerless as all the other gods. Right? Because if you're going to say, just like all the gods of the words are elilim and Hashem, so it's a problem. Right? Because how are you doing it? So you cannot, you cannot come and say, right? You cannot come and say that you have to make a pasek. After lim pasek. Elilim, elilim zelo malachim. Elilim, they're gods. Yeah, also, one must pause between the words ki and kol. Okay, this a lot of people make this mistake. I hear this all the time on Shabbat. I go crazy, Shema. right? That they do ki kol elo No. What they do? Uh, they do ki kol. What? There is a second that's going between elidim. But that's the main hefsek because if not chas v'shalom, you're saying that a kadosh baruch hu is yeah, yeah, an elidim, but also by ki and kol, right? Now the reason why, right? Because the note on it's actually a pasek. Yeah? What does that mean? There's a psik between ki and kol. Right? And therefore, that's why it's kol and not kol. No. One more time. We say ki kol. Why do you say ki kol? Because since there's a, a pasek in ki, that's why you say kol. One more time. Let me explain because I see people going on the side. One more time. One more time. Let me let me explain. The rule is beged kefet, right? Berosh amila beged kipat bet kimel dalit kaf pei ta. Berosh amila. The beginning of the word has a dagesh kal, a dot in the middle. I don't know if you ever saw paro, and then there's faro. What's the difference? It's the same guy. The difference is is that if you have always usually beged kefet berosh amila. You have dot. If the previous word finishes with Ohio or Ehevi, Ohio, Ohio. right? Ohio. Aleph, Ohio. Hey, Yod, Vav, or Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yod. Ehevi, or we do Ohio just to remember. So if it finishes with Aleph, Hey, Vav, Yod, the word before, it drops out, right? So Vayikra finishes with Aleph. So it's Faro. It's not Paro. It's Pharaoh, and that's why in the English, they had Pharaoh. Where did Pharaoh come from? Because it's true, we do mention Pharaoh, right? But if you, we don't, meaning if it's just Stam Pharaoh, it's Pharaoh, right? That's the way that is his name. But sometimes you do have it. Now, if there's a Ta'am of Sikh, which means you put a Pasek, anytime in the Ta'amim, Ta'amim Mikra, some Ta'amim, they lead on. Uvlechtecha vaderech. Shofar Olech. Shofar Olech is the, the thing like this. It leads on to the next one. But there's a Tarcha. Tarcha, you pause. Ani, Adonai Elohechem. The Ani is a pause. Hashem Elohechem. Right? The Atnach, right? Which is like the fork. That's a pause. Right? Oh, certain pauses. So once you make a pause, that's it. So therefore, here, if we do, if you say that it's going to be key, you're not going to make a pause. It should be ki chol amin. You don't say chol in the pasuk. If you actually look at it, it says kol. Why? Because there's a pasek. So you have to do ki chol eloe hamim elilim pasek. Vadonai shamaim asa. So therefore, that's what he says over here. The liturgical note on the word ki calls for a pause. And therefore, the letter of kaf in the word kol has a dagesh. Okay, very, very important. 
Uh, you actually have it in the bottom here. Look at the bottom, 126. <laughs> Whenever the letter bet, kim, and dalet, kaf, pei, or tav begins in a word, let it spread out with the gesh. Depending on the letter, however, if the previous word ends in aleph, hey, vav, or yod, right, the first letter of the following is pronounced without the gesh. In this case, since the letter no calls for a pause between the two words, the letter kaf is kol. Where's the special from? He's going to bring it down, and we're going to see it now. Right? It's a pasuk. It's not really. This is from the Torah, right? Right. This, by the way, they make the exact same mistake on Lel Shabbat. I'll read to you. I'll read to you like this, and and uh, I want uh, what's his name uh, David to pay attention to what I'm saying, so he could start making corrections. Hmm. Listen to this. We come and say, "Shiru Ladonai, Shir Chadash, Shiru Ladonai Kol Adetz, Shiru Ladonai Bechut Shmo, Vasur Min Shodoh, Sapur Olim Kavodoh, Kol Amim Niflota, Kivudon Ladonai Mulam Mo, Ladonai Ugemi Ki." Here you have a comma. The majority of the people on Friday night, why in the morning do you have to make a facet and the night you don't? Did they put it in the, in the sidu? They, they have a comma. So I hear in this better Knesset, I stop them. Ah, they make a pause? Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So what happens is, he says over here, in most verses where these words appear together, they are pronounced ki chol. Okay? One must pause between also the words amim and elilim so that they do not sound like one word ha'amim elilim. So it's ki Elilim, because if not, it sounds like Amim Melilim, Melilim. No, no, no. So that's another pause. Again, it's a shorter one because it's just dividing between, but it's Bemet, it's also a pause. Likewise, you have to pause between Asa and Shamai Masa. What does that mean? Meaning you have to make up Shamai Masa, because if not, it sounds like Shamai Masa, right? So the same thing. The general rule for all the prayers, wherever a word ends with the letter Mem and the following one begins with an Aleph, Right or an ayin or a vowel, a vowel like a shuru, you have to put a pause because if not, it sounds like you're actually coming and putting them together. One second, right? And so the pasuk of Odula Hashem Kitov Kirulam Chasto that appears in the middle of the passage is to be recited only once, unlike the custom of something to recite it twice, right? And he says you must make sure to pronounce a long vowel chidik, right, in the word ki correctly, like ki, so it does not sound like we are saying kilolam. Right? Another point to make sure to pronounce the words chasto per, uh, correctly, since people often carelessly make it chasdo instead. Again, each one of these things is uh, different. Uh, this is a Ben Ishchai that he says that you shouldn't make double the word enkoflinuto is double the, the entire concept of hodula Hashem Kito Kilo Chasto. That's a Ben Ishchai. The other one was going to be the entire concept of the Kavachayim, so you have to say ki and not ke leolam. Uh, ke le -o no, not ke leo. Ki leolam Chasto, and you have to make sure that you do the chasto properly. Halacha Yod comes and it says like this: After Hodu, we're going to say a whole bunch of different psukim from Tehilim. Okay, so we're going to. So the first group is going to be Ramu Hashem Alkenu Shachvu Larkacho, which is Perek Tehilim ninety nine, Sadik Tet Pasuk five. Ramu Hashem Alkenu Shachvu Larkacho Kedosh Hashem Ki Kedoshu, right? Perek Sadik Tet Pasuk Tet. Vurachum Yecha Beravon is Perek Samechet, Ayn Chet, 38, Lamed Chet. Atah Hashem lo tichla rachamecha, Perek Mem, Sechor rachamecha, Perek Hafei, Tzinuoz del Elohim, Perek Samechet. The second group, En Lekamot Hashem, Perek Tzadik Dalet, En La Hashem HaYeshua, Perek Gimel, Hashem Tzavakot, Perek Mem Vav. So again, basically, right, you see over here where they actually broke it up, Every single thing, which is actually something incredible, they took from all different places of Tilim and they put them in the Hodu. Okay, that's what they did, right? I don't know why he didn't do that from the beginning part, meaning only here is he saying all the because I guess here they're, they're so diverse and they're so dispersed that he actually brought this. Even the first part of the Hodu oh. is different with Ketilim in us by us. If you just take the Hodu, I don't even think it mentions anything where it actually is. Um, but if you actually pay attention. The Hodu, oh, here he brings that the Hodu is coming from Tivrea Yamim Aleph Tetzain. 
But really, by it's also part of the Perek of Tehillim, right? Of the part of the Perek of Tehillim, right, is actually going to bring down a lot of it. But there's a lot of changes, obviously. You understand? So therefore, there's a whole question, like you know, what exactly is uh, is happening? You understand? So right, that's the the kufei. You're going to have a lot of it, but then also, okay, there's going to be differences. You know, there's going to be a few differences, of it. right? Exactly. So we're going to have differences, but I don't know. But I'm saying, but in certain sidurim. They actually bring down even all. Okay? That's going to be halacha yod. Halacha yod alef. Okay? Or actually, no, there's 127 on the bottom. The Sefer HaShkol and Uchot in the Kolbo all mention that the custom is to recite these groups of verses, but they list only two of the three of the verses we recite. We recite the verses, Hashem Tzavakot, Hashem Tzavakot, Hashem Tzavakot, Right? The verse should be present in your lips. The full list of the verses can be found in the Shara Kavanot. Okay? This is what we do. But again, this is what we're actually saying. Right in the different places. So Alakha Yudalif. Yudalif says, when we are going to say these two psukim, Avel Nikamot Hashem, right? And he comes, we have to have kavana about the Asara Aruge Malchut that were killed, right, by the Romans. Um, and to nurture the hope that Hashem will avenge their deaths. Okay, the Mikubalim actually taught that by thinking these thoughts, we rectify sparks of the souls that have been trapped by the Satan in the dimension of. Asiya, right? So here in the footnote, he actually explains there's four worlds according to the Kabbalah. If you want, you could call them Abiya, right? Atsilut, right? You're going, you know, from the highest to the lowest, right? So it's Abiya, Atsilut, Biriya, Yitzira, Asiya. Okay, and each one, and this is what, if you remember, when Mansur was speaking about, huh? What's Abiya? The Rashatevot. Atsilut, Biriya, Yitzira, Asiya. That's Abiya. That's the Rashetivot for the four worlds, but it's going from the highest to the lowest, a bia. Okay, so we start with the asiyah going up to the the yitzira, to the bria, to the atzilut, and then we go down afterwards in the tefillah. So, and by the way, if you remember, we actually made an entire shiur on this. The kaddishim are the ones that's bringing it up and down. Yeah, the kaddishim. When you say the kaddish, each kaddish is bringing it up, and each kaddish is bringing it down. You remember we spoke about this once, right? Fine. Huh? It's exactly this elevator going up and down. So here he comes and he says, there are four worlds in the heavens. The dimensions of Asiyah, Yetzira, Biriyah, Tzilut. Shachri prayers are divided into sections corresponding to the worlds. The sections beginning with the Kedat Yitzhak corresponds to the world of Asiyah until Baruch Shamar. Therefore, we can liberate these trapped sparks by reciting these psukim before the prayers ascend from the world of Asiyah. So basically it's Kilu that you're opening up the gates and you're letting out all these Neshamot which are stuck. That's what you're doing when you're saying these Pesukim. Okay? Next, Alakha Yudbet. Alakha Yudbet says, the collected verses were right are followed by Perek Lamed of Tehilim, beginning with the second Pasuk of Arum Mimcha Hashem. You know, we don't start Mizmor Shei Chalukat Abayi David. We start Arum Mimcha Hashem Kidilitani. We do not recite the introductory verse. This is all our custom all year long, even during Chalukah. So for us, for Moroccans, we do do it on Chalukah. We actually start Mizmor Shei Chalukat Abayi David. Right? And the rest of the days, we actually skip it out just like them. So let's see 129, 130. The Rishonim did not mention the addition of this passage, nor is it mentioned in the Bet Yosef or the Shulchan Aruch. These are not brought down. No Rishonim, no Bet Yosef, no Shulchan Aruch. So because of this, Rav Yashif, uh, sorry, Rav Yashif, the Vilna, this is Gaumi Vilna, did not recite it, but instead continued directly to Baruch Shema. He didn't do it. Right away, Baruch Shema. Yeah, right away, Baruch Shema. Our source for reciting this pasuk is the Shara Kavanot, in which the Arizal explained that it is a prophecy about the ten Asarar Ugei Malchut, as such it's connected to the pasuk of El Nekamot Hashem. Okay? Fine. One thirty. So now one thirty says the Rav Pe'alim explained that we we have skip this out. As the Mishnat Hasidim explained, the Kabbalistic theme of this psalm is extraction of the sparks of the souls, and therefore we concentrate our thoughts on this process, which is achieved through this. So basically, I guess, you don't even need that first pasu. Okay? Fine. Hashem Elech. We stand up and we recite, Hashem Elech, Hashem Elech, Hashem Yimuch, Olam Ve'ed. Why? We are going to say two times, this is the style that people declared, Hashem Elokim, Hashem Elokim, which is done also twice. In this way, we declare that Hashem is the king over our bodies, and that he is the king over our Neshamot as well. Each time the cantor recites it alone, and then we come and we repeat it. In those congregations where children are invited to leave, 
right? The cantor should still lead the congregation reciting these psukim. If the cantor is not yet arrived in the synagogue, another adult should lead the congregation. Our minhag is actually that the rabbi does it. Okay? So here, number 131. So 131 says, Bet Yosef explained that the reason for reciting the, the verse twice is based upon a Kabbalistic concept, okay, connected to the Pasuk of Hashem Elech, with the concept of the Sarah Rugem al as well, based on the Kabbalah. And the Ben Yishchai, he put it in simpler terms as explained above. Although it's forbidden to recite the Shema Yisrael twice in a row, right, here you're allowed to recite Hashem Melech twice in a row. Meaning, Shema Yisrael, if you say it twice, it looks like there's two gods. But Hashem Melech is just like Hashem Walakim, that you're allowed to come and to recite twice, just like they did it in the Tanakh. But Ben Yosef testified that in some communities, the verse was recited three times. But he complained that there's no base for such a practice. This practice is recorded in the Romanian prayer book. Okay? The next part was, is that the once is the Chazan, then the Sheikh Tzibur. So he says, Odio Sebchai excited the Minchat Aron, that we emulate the angels who recite this verse in the same manner. One angel declares it, and then everyone else responds. So the same thing, we do the exact same thing. 133 is, is that it should be another adult. This is the ruling of the Benish Chai. Odio Sebchai added, that there's a custom to lift one's heels for each phrase of the verse. Although this is not mentioned anywhere in the Rizal's teaching, he suggested the basis that it's a kid who has meaning that just like Kadosh Kadosh, you pick up your heels, so to this Hashem Elech, you do it. Regarding the custom of lifting one's heels when reciting this pasuk of Kadosh Kadosh, the Ben Yishchai, right, warned that people should not leap high in the air and make a spectacle of themselves. This warning applies to the custom of lifting one's heels when reciting this verse as well. Actually, in Shlaim, we don't even hold this practice. Rav Yitzchak Bueno wrote, he says, in the name of Rav Yitzchak Boton, he says the Pasuk Shemelech, even if there's going to be 10 men present, right? He says the leader must be someone who fits service as a cantor. It appears that the Benishai concur with the second ruling only, but he permits the saying it even without 10 men. It is apparent that the Kabachim Sofer likewise permitted this, since he ruled that if someone, right, hears an individual reciting it, he does not have to stand up. So basically, it comes out that you're allowed to say it by yourself. You don't need 10 people to say it. That's what he's fascinating. But he does say that the, meaning the Benishai had the Minhai, that he would actually pick up their feet. Yeah, yeah. Nobody's not. That's what you're saying.